Actor Alec Baldwin recently fired a gun loaded with blank cartridges on a movie set, killing one and injuring another. Here are the ways in which blank cartridges can kill you. The BBC reports that actor Alec Baldwin fired a dummy gun on a film set on Thursday, October 21st, killing the director of photography and injuring the director. Initial reports indicate that this was an accident caused by an improperly loaded prop gun. The most famous death caused by a prop gun was that of actor Brandon Lee, who was killed while filming a scene in which his co-star fired a blank cartridge at him. The film crew had made a mistake by not double-checking the gun's barrel before loading it with a blank cartridge. If they had checked, they would have found that the tip of a dummy bullet had broken off and was still stuck in the barrel of the gun. A dummy bullet is a fake cartridge that is used to simulate a real bullet during filming. When Lee's co-star fired the gun at him, the exploding gases of the blank cartridge propelled the forgotten fragment of the dummy bullet forward, hitting Lee and lodging in his spine. Another way in which blank cartridges can kill is if the gun is held too close to a person when it is fired, resulting in the force of escaping gases breaking off a piece of skull or bone and pushing that fragment into a vital organ. It's also possible that a fragment of the blank cartridge's metal casing can break off and exit the gun's muzzle at high velocity. The paper or wax that keeps the gunpowder in place will also shoot out at high velocity. Another risk is that residue from previous blank cartridges can build up in the gun's barrel. If the gun is not cleaned properly, this residue can build up to a significant size, causing the gas explosion to become more violent and propelling the hard residue at fatal velocities. The bottom line is that one should never shoot a blank cartridge from a short distance and never aim at someone's eyes or head. Protesters that have taken to the streets seeking justice for all black lives lost at the hands of police brutality have been met in several areas in the United States with tear gas and rubber bullets. Concern over the use of these crowd control tools are often dismissed by law enforcement as such weapons are thought to be less lethal. But are they? Here is what you need to know about rubber bullets and the deadly effects they can have on those who are injured by them. Rubber bullets fall under the category of kinetic impact projectiles that are used for crowd control purposes by law enforcement. According to a 2016 report by Physicians for Human Rights and the International Network of Civil Liberties Organizations, rubber bullets can be spherical or cylindrical and can be made of hard rubber, plastic or PVC. They can also be fired as single shots or in groups of multiple projectiles within a cartridge. Not all crowd control projectiles are made of rubber, though. San Antonio journalist Mark Dunphy shared a photo of his injuries on Twitter after being shot by a wooden projectile. According to a report published in BMJ Open in 2017, rubber bullets can cause serious injuries and even death. The study found that out of 1,984 individuals who sustained injuries from kinetic impact projectiles, 53 died and 300 were permanently disabled from the injury. 71% of the survivors had severe injuries. If an individual receives a shot from a rubber bullet in the neck, it could lead to permanent damage or a deadly injury to their airways. A shot sustained in the eye could lead to losing it, and a point-blank shot could lead to death. According to the report by Physicians for Human Rights and the International Network of Civil Liberties Organizations, rubber bullet impacts affect bones, muscles, and limbs most severely. So, Tomo Sapiens, if you're participating in any of the protests, more power to you. Just remember to be careful out there. Tragedy struck one of the world's most beautiful regions when a cable car crashed down and rolled near the town of Stressa in the scenic Piedmont region of northwestern Italy. Here are the details. The BBC reports that 15 people boarded a cable car in the Italian town of Stressa just after midday on Sunday, May 23rd. This cable car system moves tourists at a relatively high speed, taking only 20 minutes to complete the steep journey from Stressa to a lookout point on Mount Montarone. When the cable car was only 300 meters from the top, it seems that a cable snapped and the car fell about 20 meters and rolled down the steep slope before being stopped by trees. Nearby hikers reportedly heard a loud hiss before the crash. Some of those who died were thrown from the car. Of the 15 passengers, 14 died, while the only survivor is being treated for serious injuries in a nearby hospital. The disaster is likely to renew doubts about Italy's transport infrastructure. In 2018, the Morandi Bridge in Genoa collapsed after years of neglect, killing 43 people. In 2009, a freight train carrying gas derailed and exploded, killing 32 people. That accident was also blamed on poor maintenance. 
Rescuers faced a crash site on steep and difficult terrain. A fire service vehicle overturned while responding, but no rescuers were injured. Each cable car can usually hold about 40 passengers. The service had recently reopened following the lifting of coronavirus restrictions. A small plane has crashed into a residential area in California, causing fatalities. Here's what you need to know. At least two people died when a private twin-engine C-340 Cessna plane crashed in Southern California on Monday afternoon, according to CNN. The plane came down in the city of Santee in San Diego County at about 12.14 p.m., according to the Federal Aviation Administration, with NBC7 San Diego explaining that the pilot had failed in an attempt to land in a nearby field after some sort of issue. As the plane went down toward the intersection of Greencastle and Jeremy Streets, witnesses said its wing made contact with a UPS truck that was nearing a stop sign which killed its driver. The plane's fuselage then slid toward two homes and exploded, with Santee Fire Department Battalion Chief Justin Matsushita telling reporters two or three other houses had also sustained damage, according to Fox 5 San Diego. Two residents were rescued by a group of neighbors. Fox 5 San Diego reports that this is the third private plane to crash in the city within the last six years, but there is some evidence this is part of an even wider phenomena. According to a USA Today investigation, almost 45,000 people have been killed over the past five decades in private planes and helicopters, which is almost nine times the number to have died in airline crashes. In 2014, for instance, one person was killed and another injured after another small private plane crash landed in a San Diego parking lot. The plane, a single-engine Mooney M20, was carrying a pilot, a 52-year-old woman, and an 80-year-old female passenger. While attempting to make a landing at Montgomery Field Airport, that aircraft bounced and continued westbound. The plane next clipped the top of a department store and knocked down a light fixture before crashing into the parking lot of a busy shopping center. Similarly, in 2015, three people aboard a small plane were killed when a Beechcraft BE-36 bound for Norwood Memorial Airport crashed into a family home in Plainville, Massachusetts. The pilot reportedly told an air traffic controller that he was experiencing engine failure a few minutes before the plane crashed into the top, rear end of the house. A family of four escaped from the building unharmed, but Massachusetts State Police said the two adults and a child on board the plane were killed. In 2014, USA Today reported that federal investigators attributed these kinds of private crashes to pilot errors 86% of the time. However, there were repeated instances in which crashes, deaths, and injuries were caused by defective parts and dangerous designs, which cast doubt on the government's official rulings. USA Today's investigation claimed at the time to reveal the inner workings of an industry hit so hard by legal claims that it sought and won liability protection from Congress. That would likely be no consequence consolation to Domingo Galicia, who was in his trailer with his daughter at the Marmac Colony Club mobile home at Lake Worth, Florida, before a small plane crashed into it in 2015. He told CBS Miami he stepped outside his home just before the plane went down. But his daughter, 21-year-old Bani Galicia, was inside the trailer when the plane landed on top of it, and Galicia told local media she was killed. Two mobile homes, including Galicia's, caught fire after the crash. The trailer park's management said three bodies were pulled from the wreckage. The causes of these crashes are reported on far less often than the crashes themselves, but in the cases of another crash in 2015 which killed two first-year college students in Madison County, New York, engine problems were immediately identified as the source of the problem. The two 19-year-old Colgate University students rented a single-engine Cessna plane from Hamilton Municipal Airport. The plane reportedly encountered engine problems shortly after takeoff. The pair sent a distress signal before the plane crashed into a wooded area in the town of Eaton and both students died at the scene. Sometimes these things are simply crazy accidents, like in 2014 when a single-engine Cirrus SR-22 plane was traveling from Cleveland, Tennessee to Frederick, Maryland, and it collided with a Robinson R-44 helicopter in mid-air near the Frederick Municipal Airport. The airplane deployed a parachute that helped it to descend, while the helicopter broke into pieces after hitting the ground, killing the three occupants. Two years ago, having vowed to give police powers to slaughter gun-toting bandits, the former governor of the state of Rio de Janeiro, Wilson Witzel, announced himself in his new role by tweeting a video of himself apparently flying over gang-controlled areas as police officers fired shots into it. Now, with Witzel having been impeached on corruption charges according to the New York Times, his replacement appears to have announced himself with an even more violent gesture. Here's what you need to know. 
Just days after the new governor of the state of Rio de Janeiro, Claudio Castro, took office saying he would prioritize reducing crime, at least 25 people, including one police officer, have been killed in a police operation in its capital, according to the New York Times. The Guardian reports around 200 police targeted an alleged drug trafficker gang in the working class district of Jacarezinho. Intense gunfire erupted as they entered the area in the early morning, according to local media outlet Globo. A police helicopter flew low as armed men fled by jumping between rooftops, according to images shown on local television seen by the BBC. The Associated Press spoke to witnesses describing police killing already wounded men. Najini Borges, vice president of the Human Rights Commission at Brazil's Bar Association, told the New York Times there were executions of people who had already surrendered, adding it was absolute barbarism. Rodrigo Oliveira, a deputy police chief, said officers conducted themselves lawfully, adding that the only execution that took place was that of the police officer. At least two train passengers were struck by stray bullets as their train was caught in crossfire, according to the New York Times. Security forces in Brazil have regularly been accused of using excessive force against the civilian population, according to the BBC, and this is the deadliest operation in Rio de Janeiro since 2016. A court ruling limiting police action in poor neighborhoods of Rio de Janeiro during the pandemic to only that viewed as essential appears to not have been applied here. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.